Valentine's Day is fast approaching. A day of tenderness, togetherness, and sentimental gestures. And you know what? It's rubbish. If you're in a relationship, it's an absolute minefield to navigate. Are we going to celebrate this entirely manufactured holiday or not? And if so, are we going big or are we making a token gesture? Are we doing it with a wry sense of irony or are we doing it with absolute sincerity? And if you're single, it's lonely as hell. But here's the thing. Look at me. Look at me. You are a stunner. And you know what? You don't need anybody else to have fun. You're more than enough fun on your own. So in the spirit of telling Cupid precisely where to stick his bow and arrow, here are four great games to play solo. You absolute dreamboat, you. It's genuinely quite difficult to escape Cthulhu and Lovecraft in the board game world. The theme is as ever-present and inescapable as the ruinous old gods it depicts. Sometimes the only thing more terrifying and daunting than an ancient elder being destroying your entire existence in the blink of an eye, though, is an actual human relationship, which makes Arkham Horror the card game a perfectly acceptable way to spend your solo Valentine's Day in my eyes. If you've ever played an Arkham or Cthulhu-themed board game, you'll likely have had to deal with a crate full of plastic miniatures, more poppable cardboard tokens than an eldritch demon has thumbs to get through a box as big as the tentacle mount monster himself. Arkham Horror, the card game, strips all the chaff out of these bloated boxes and condenses the central experience that Lovecraftian board games provide into a few decks of cards. The main thing that this living card game brings to the fold though is that unlike Arkham Horror the board game or Mansions of Madness and all the other countless interpretations that you've seen before, Arkham Horror the card game is an honest to god campaign in which your character's decks of cards will become stronger and more corrupted. Irrevocable horrors will be left in your campaign's wake as characters permanently die and arcane knowledge is unlocked and you'll be able to tell a proper story. The card game allows the players a lot more agency than its board game predecessor as well, with some genuine strategy available in its card play rather than just an unending series of events that the player is subjected to. The gameplay is what you might expect from something like Magic the Gathering or Keyforge, with a hand of abilities drawn each turn, giving you weapons, allies, spells, and all kinds of things to add on to your usual movement and attacks. To win a scenario, you'll have to progress through the story by discovering clues amongst the world and fulfilling objectives dictated by the scenario. Whenever something goes wrong though, you'll also be adding to the agenda of the evildoers, which will bring you one step closer to a game over. Arkham Horror the Card Game boasts a truly obscene amount of content that has been released since it first hit the market in 2016, with additional bits and bobs to add to your characters new challenges to face, and new monsters hiding in the dark. Problem is though, that's a lot of stuff to buy, which means you'll have to do some serious investing if you want to keep new experiences and new content in the Arkham world coming. If you've got the time and cash and you want a seriously enjoyable romp in a 20th century monster mash where some really horrible things can happen to your world, then Arkham Horror the Card Game is a perfect pick. Next up is This War of Mine. No, really, do stick with me on this one. If you've never heard of This War of Mine, it was originally released as a video game based heavily on the Siege of Sarajevo. In it, you control a group of civilians trying to survive the siege. Snipers make it too dangerous to venture out in the daytime, so that time is spent cooking, building water filters, resting, and generally trying to keep everyone alive. At night, you venture out into the broader city, visiting different locations in order to scrounge what supplies and weapons you can without being detected and or killed. It's a brilliantly tense video game, but the thing that makes it truly compelling is the way in which it lands really awful dilemmas in your lap, forcing you to make decisions that pit your morality against your will to survive. For example, two desperate children might come to your door begging for medicine to give to their sick mother. Will you share your precious resources with them, potentially condemning one of your own survivors to death? Or will you turn the children away and, in all probability, seal the fate of these children and their ailing mother? It's bleak, it's brutal, and it's brilliant. And it also happens to be one of the best video game to board game adaptations ever made. 
With an ominous book of stories offering up snippets of hope, little pits of despair, and some truly agonizing dilemmas, it's not a cheerful game, but it's nonetheless extremely compelling. And if you take the plunge and throw yourself into it solo, it's a genuinely rewarding, even moving experience. Because board games are great fun, and obviously friends are brilliant, but the thing is, when you put those two elements together, people have a natural tendency to try and make light of difficult situations. So while you can certainly appreciate the craft of this war of mine when playing with friends, chances are you're going to end up chuckling your way through most of it. And that's fine, of course, you're free to play games in whatever way you desire, but going into this one solo, really giving yourself over to the experience of this war of mine, it gives you a new appreciation for the game and the stakes you play with as you try to keep your plucky band of everyday heroes alive. It's a rare thing to find a board game genuinely moving, but this war of mine absolutely manages it. Ganchon Clever, or That's Pretty Clever, as nobody's calling it, doesn't look like much. As far as board game themes go, this one is drier than a stale loaf of bread at the National Plain Cracker Symposium. In short, you throw dice, write the numbers in boxes, and repeat. It is the most rolly and righty of roll and write games. And it comes with a translated English name that's oddly condescending, as you once again fluff the whole thing and score less than 100 points. Well done, it draws. That's pretty clever. No wonder they added the exclamation mark and neon colour scheme to try and liven the whole thing up. The thing is though, Ganchon Clever is actually brilliant. Like, really, really brilliant. What makes it so great is the way that those numbers and boxes, by themselves relatively unassuming, come together to form cascading combos of points that beg just one more go to try and top your high score. Believe it or not, Candy Crush has nothing on this. Key to the whole thing are the different colours on your scoring pad. Each set of colour-coded boxes gives you points for doing a very specific thing with the matching die of that colour. You might be completing rows and columns, checking off as many boxes as possible, needing to constantly roll higher and higher, or roll over a specific number each time around to keep the chain going. That's not all. You see, when you use one of the dice you rolled that round, any dice that have a smaller number are locked off for the rest of the turn. This means it's never as simple as just picking the biggest number, because you might find yourself with no dice left to place, losing more points than if you just plonked down a slightly smaller result. But wait, that's not all either, because filling in certain boxes, rows and columns also has the chance to unlock bonuses, from allowing you to re-roll dice and use an extra die in a round to filling in extra boxes, which might let you fill in another box and get another bonus, which might let you... Okay, you see where I'm going with this. And don't forget the fox heads. No, we don't get the connection either which will give you big points as long as you don't just focus on one colour, so you're going to want to keep an even spread. Gans looks dull, but it's a dice rolling, box filling, combo making, point scoring marvel that will keep you coming back for another shot at that 300 plus point high score. And the best thing is that it's actually just as good by yourself as our dozens upon dozens of hours spent playing the mobile app version as well as the tabletop version shows. And if you happen to master Gan Schon Clever, its sequel Doppel So Clever, that's twice as clever for you non-German speakers, is an even trickier challenge that adds some interesting new twists to the excellent original. We'd still start with Gans, but whichever one you play, it's a smart choice. A lot of board games live and die by one central gimmick that sets them apart from the crowd. Sure, you've played this kind of game before, but have you done it with dice? Or in real time? Or hanging upside down and speaking in tongues? One Deck Dungeon shoves its USP right in the title of the box, and it's very much a game that does what it says on the tin. Condensing a complete dungeon crawling, loot grabbing, monster bashing, trap avoiding adventure into a single deck of cards. Playing is as simple as picking a hero from the usual motley crew of fighters, mages and rogues, depicted quite refreshingly as an all-female cast. Once you've selected a hero, you'll need a challenge to attempt. Bosses and dungeons will give you some overarching challenges that you'll have to face throughout the adventure, each getting more and more annoying and troublesome as you progress deeper into the darkness, finally meeting with the big boss that guards the bottom floor. Before you can best the boss though, you'll need to acquire some tasty loot, whilst crushing some monsters and avoiding traps along the way. Every encounter in One Deck Dungeon will ask you to roll your character's pool of dice, and either through sheer luck or clever skill uses, fill up the coloured slots on the challenge. Different slots on the challenge might waste your time, represented by discarding cards from the deck that you haven't yet explored, or deal damage to your character if you can't cover them up with your dice. 
You'll always get through a challenge in one deck, but it's your ability to negate the penalties along the way that will see you through to the end. Once that challenge has been overcome though, the clever bit comes in via loot. Every card you'll come across has three different bits of loot on it with varying effects and value. The left hand side of the card can be slotted under the left side of your character sheet to equip your loot as an item and increase your dice pool going forward. The bottom of the card can be slotted at the bottom of your sheet to learn a new skill which might be the difference between a failed encounter and an incredibly close shave. The third and final option is the experience points at the top of the card, which you can combine with previous cards to level up and increase the amount of skills and items that you can equip. One Deck Dungeon is a really smart little box, and I do mean little. This thing is tinier than any dungeon cooler I've ever come across, and still packs a lot of fun solitaire action, with some really thinky little maths and probability puzzles to wrap your head around, as well as rolling big, handfuls of dice, which always makes me excited, and even a campaign mode for traveling from dungeon to dungeon. It's not the prettiest game in the world, and the theme is pretty generic, not to mention you'll have to deal with a dodgy roll ending your game every now and again, uh, as these things tend to hit you with, but One Deck Dungeon is lovely good fun in a tiny box with a cool little gimmick, which will be perfect for a quiet night. And there you have it, four great games to play solo because you are fierce and you are beautiful and you don't need anybody else and Valentine's is rubbish anyway. Of course there are lots more great games to play solo so if you have any recommendations please do leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you did there are loads more from Dicebreaker for you to watch, some of them should be popping up on your screen now. Do like, subscribe and ring the bell icon so you don't miss anything else from us, visit dicebreaker.com and most importantly have a lovely day.